Yeah. Right then. Yeah. All right, everyone. I've got a Mark V Mondeo here, 2016, two litre diesel. It's got 134,000 miles on the clock. This is the original clutch and flywheel. The driver's been driving around like a frigging lunatic with his flywheel rattling so bad I could hear it from bloody Scotland. But he, he, he obviously couldn't hear nothing. He, he only got it taken off the road when he come down here and we heard it for him. Anyway, I'm gonna run this engine and see if you can hear the noise this flywheel's rattling. Well, the, the noise it's making is absolutely terrible. Here goes. Can you hear it? Can you? It's nice, isn't it? I get the feeling the flywheel is almost about to jump out the bloody gearbox casing. Anyway, I'm going to have to take this gearbox out and I'm going to show you how I changed this clutch. And I'm hoping I can actually get this flywheel off. What kind of condition it's in, because the bolts might be covered over. This could be a problem. In fact, before I switch the engine off, look at it, the whole engine is like, oh, that is like clattering like bloody hell. Anyway, let me get on. Oh, and before I get going, if you want to know how this gearbox comes out of this car, you can watch it here. Right then. Ah! There we go, one gearbox out. Let's pull this bitch forward. There. <laughs> right, before I carry on, Jesus Christ, let me go and take a shower. <laughs> right, let's have a quick look at this clutch cover. Yeah, and I'll tell you something else as well. There's a lot of like metal dust falling out of this. So, so I'll undo these screws. Yeah. The thing is, there's six of them. You want to undo them all evenly, even though we're not going to use this clutch again. It's just good practice to undo them all a few turns at a time. This is my last screw coming out, just a Torx 40 there. I'll put one hand on this so I don't drop it and I'll prise it in a couple of places with a screwdriver then this whole clutch should come off in one piece there in actual fact that's almost on its rivets so for 134,000 miles it's just about cuffed this is exactly what I'm talking about in previous videos, where the two halves of this flywheel, flip it, it that, that's well knackered. But the thing is, the two halves of the flywheel have now overlapped the bolts, so I can't get a socket, a Torx 50 on them bolts. So it's like, if I, if I can't get a screwdriver in here and like lever this flywheel round so I can expose the bolt heads and get them off, I'm going to have to get an angle grinder and literally chop all these bits clean off and take this centre bit and, and probably cut it round here and take this centre bit right out which is going to be a right pain. I'm not going to be able to, to move these two halves of the flywheel to expose the bolts so I can't get them off. So the only way I can think to get this flywheel off now is to literally cut the centre piece out with an angle grinder. The trouble with this, it's a dirty, stinking, horrible job. I'm gonna need glasses and a bloody mask because there's gonna be a lot of metal dust flying around. And plus I'm gonna need pressure washing down later. I'm already covered in crap. All right, I'll get on with it. OK, 
Okay, so now I've, I've literally cut this out with an angle grinder. Now the whole centre bit can turn. And yeah, I can now see our bolts. I can now get the socket on the bolts. I've just got to move this, move this centre bit around. Fantastic. You know when you've been using an angle grinder, you get absolutely covered in this bullshit. Holy, do you know what? I'm going to stink of bloody burnt metal for the rest of the day. I need to go and get a shower. This is disgusting. Right, anyway, let's get this flywheel off. So you need a Torx 50 bit to remove these flywheel bolts. And there are eight of them in total. Let's get this last one out. Right, it's a bit heavy, these flywheels, so be careful lifting it off. Now just wriggle, that's it. This off. Yeah! There you go. One flywheel. The, the question has been raised. Now, now that we've actually destroyed this, this flywheel and we send it back for surcharge, because there is a surcharge from Ford on this, will they actually give it to us? I don't, oh, oh my God, it's actually come out. The centre bit has actually come out. I didn't think it done that. I could have just taken this out on the car. Oh well, I know for next one. But I'll tell you what, when, when these two halves of these flywheels cover the bolts and you can't undo them, this is the kind of drastic measures you've got to take. Right, that's it. Now I'm covered in fecking shit. God damn it, I'm having a cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. There we go. One brand spanking new dual mass flywheel. I'm just going to give it a quick spray with some brake cleaner where the clutch plate's going to sit, just to make sure there's no grease there which could make our new plate slip. There. Right, let's lift this out of the box. You've got eight bolt holes here, but you've got one little oblong hole. And there's a dowel on the end of the crankshaft that fits in that hole. So this dual mass flywheel will only fit on the end of the crankshaft in one position. These Torx 50 bolts, you may as well just renew them. If you do use them again, you might want to clean them up and put a little bit of Loctite on the threads. Right. Let's pop this back on the car then. The dowel is at six o'clock on the crankshaft. So I've got my flywheel with the little hole at six o'clock as well. So that should fit straight on there. There, that's on. I'll hold that so it don't fall off. And I'll get one bolt started. Just so it's not going anywhere. Now it's just a simple case of fit the rest of our Torx 50 bolts. I don't bother torquing these up, I just whack them up tight with the air gun. But I'll do them evenly, like 180 degrees apart each one I do. And I'll just whack them up all nice and tight with the air gun. So just to clarify, when you're tightening these bolts, you'll, you'll tighten one up, then you'll tighten the other one opposite it. Then you'll go diagonally, one there, then another 180 degrees across and so on, till they're all done up. Then go over them all again. That's it. Right, let's crack this clutch plate and cover out of the box. There we go. Yeah, once again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some brake cleaner on here. Just to make sure there's no oil on that, on that friction surface. As far as I'm aware, and I have been looking on the Ford Etis system, although this pressure plate has got like a ramp inside here, and you see these little springs, they self-adjust. They self-adjust self -adjust this, this part of the actual clutch to take up for when the clutch plate wears. 
but there's no there's no tool you have to put on here initially when this comes straight out of the box to actually adjust it to set the clutch up you just bolt this straight on and it will work and i'll give you an example at the end of this video how long a clutch has, has lasted uh, which has been fitted just in case anybody's thinking that the clutches won't last as long because you've got to set these up well you haven't if you read the ford etty system you'll see the only special tool listed is a clutch alignment tool and these clutch center plates just out of interest because they're different either side this side here it will say transmission side wrote on it so you don't want to get that wrong this will go on the clutch cover side and that will sit on the cover that way round. This is like a clutch alignment tool that's, that's just listed for these Mark V Mondeos. So you, you, just, you just align the clutch up with it. I've never actually used it. It's sat in the box in the cupboard. I mean, I've got my own one, which I'll use, which I'll show you now. This is all I use to align these clutches. It's just a handle, a shaft. This bit goes through your clutch center plate, which is a nice snug fit. And the end piece goes into where you would have had a spigot bearing in the, in the end of the crankshaft. But obviously there's, there's no bearing in, the, in these crankshafts. But this will fit in the hole quite snug as well. So when both of these are lined up perfectly, your clutch will be literally aligned. So you can see the end of my clutch aligner will fit in that little hole in the end of the crankshaft. It's quite a snug fit. There's a little bit of, of play there, but we can wriggle it about when our clutch is on. So I'm going to whack this on the dual mass flywheel. So first up, we're going to put our clutch pressure plate and fix it on the three dowels that are on this flywheel. So you can't really get it on wrong. Otherwise the bolt holes won't line up. So that will fit on there like that. You'll have to hold it so it don't drop off again. And then just fit a couple of bolts in. Just get them in lightly. Now all my six clutch cover screws are now, they're all just finger tight, okay? So now I'm gonna slide my clutch alignment tool right into the crankshaft so the end piece is in. Then this other sort of like piece will fit into our spline section of our clutch plate. And I'll just give it a little wriggle about to centralize it. And that'll be a nice loose fit in there. This is the important part. Your six bolts that are going to tighten down this cover plate. The key thing here is to tighten them up evenly. So if I start on this one here, I tighten it up a few threads and then I'll do the one opposite, 180 degrees apart. And I'll, I'll, do it, I'll tighten it the same amount, just a small amount. And then I'll nip these two ones down just a little bit. What I'm doing is, I'm tightening all these bolts by the same amount. So if I do this in one, two complete turns, I'll do the one opposite two complete turns. There, that's all our six clutch cover bolts tightened up, tightened up and they're all tightened up evenly. The worst thing you could ever do would be to just tighten one of these up all the way and leave the others loose and then tighten the next one up because what will probably happen you'll release that you'll release the tension on this spring and and this clutch will come out of this cover will come out of adjustment then you'll be in serious trouble and you will need a special tool to reset this clutch cover back to how it should be if you've lined it up properly this actual clutch alignment tool it should slide in and out absolutely perfect that will actually go straight into the crankshaft like that and then that will be a nice sliding fit there should be no resistance putting that in it should be nice and easy like that your clutch slave cylinder bloody hell that's noisy is actually pretty straightforward it's just three eight mil screws and once you've loosened them they will just literally wind out there and then that will just lift straight off no problem at all one new slave cylinder right let's crack this out of the box 
It's nice and shiny, isn't it? Nice and smooth. I, I tell you what, it won't be nice and clean for long. <laughs> Notice there's a little dust cover in the, in the end of it where the pipe goes in. We'll leave that in there until we actually fit the pipe. Right, let's stick this back in the gearbox. Notice there's a gearbox seal here. If the gearbox was to leak, it would leak from this seal. So you don't need to put any sealant or anything or O-ring or, or anything on these slave cylinders. They just fit on straight as is, like that. And that'll push in, and now we'll bolt it up. You know, and obviously, be careful how you tighten them up. They're only eight mil screws going into alley, so you don't want to strip the threads. But it comes with experience how tight and how tight you'd actually do these up. Beep, beep. Well, that's it then. The dual mass flywheel and clutch is all fitted. The gearbox has a new slave cylinder in it and it's all ready to go back together. So that's how I fit a clutch on a Mark V Mondeo. Dead simple. Right. So how long does a clutch last in a Mark V Mondeo 2 litre diesel? So this is a clutch I changed like a week ago. But if you look at the little ridge in there between the friction material and the rivet, there's still quite a bit there. Even round this side, there's, it's about the same. So there's actually, there's quite a lot of the clutch plate still left. Now this clutch plate has done 97,000 miles. This is not the original clutch. This has been fitted. This is one that, that was changed after the original clutch. And it's done 97k. And the only reason this has been changed is because the flywheel was rattling badly. But judging by the amount of friction material that's left, I'd say this would easily do another between 30 and 50,000 miles quite easily. Well, if I was to compare it to a Mark IV Mondeo, the Mark IV Mondeo were a bit more predictable. The trouble with these Mark Vs, I've had clutches, well, here's the problem. Generally speaking, it's not the clutch that wears out. We have had a few clutches wear out and slip, but I'd say 80% of the time, it is the flywheel that rattles first, and the clutches get changed because of the flywheels. I'd say the clutch itself, the friction, the clutch plate, they normally slip around about 150, 160,000 miles, whereas the flywheels, they will wear out anything from 80,000 miles when they're still under warranty. We've had quite a few that are under 100,000 miles where the flywheels have been rattling badly. Or on the other end of the scale, the flywheel can last 160, sometimes 170,000 miles. This one's obviously lasted 135, well, 134,000 miles, which I guess isn't too bad, but it's not that good either when you compare it to a Mark IV, where a flywheel in one of them can easily last over 200,000. But anyway, the, the last thing I'm gonna say about it is, yeah, I take these clutches straight out of the box and bolt them straight on, and they, they last. They will last as long as the original clutch that come from the factory. I mean, I'm living this every day. I see how long these clutches are lasting. And the sad bit about it all is, as, as I've already said, it's the flywheels that rattle first. And the clutches are still perfectly good, but we change them anyway, because we're not gonna put a used clutch back on, it, back on a, 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 a new flywheel. And, and that's it. So, I'm done. That's it, till the next time. See ya. Oh, just one last thing. Bye. <laughs> Adios.